Hey guys, you ever get tired of this big metal clunky thing on the side of your camp stove? I know I certainly did. Let me show you what I did to make my life easier. I got rid of this whole big thing and added a standard RV propane connection. I added it to the end of my uh, flexible hose. Nice quick disconnect. This quick disconnect is available at any RV supply store all over the country. Sure made my life easier. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, the tools you're gonna need is a drill, a couple of wrenches, a step bit, 11 64th drill bit, eighth inch flare fitting, a eighth by quarter inch reducing coupling, quarter inch uh, elbow, your RV uh, propane uh, quick disconnect, a flaring tool, and a tubing cutter. Okay, the first thing we gotta do is remove the top of the grill. In this particular case, we have these five screws, which I've already done. And then we're gonna pull this, this top over, okay? So here we have to, we're mainly concerned with this connection here. Now, let me show you what we're actually doing here. So in particular, we're just basically re replacing this connection, which is this connection here. So this connection is a proprietary uh, connection that uh, the manufacturer has. So all I want to do is, in theory, replace this connection with your standard RV quick disconnect. So what we're going to do is remove this and then replace it with this. So how are we going to do that? We're going to take a whole bunch of series of fittings. We're going to cut this. Uh, copper tubing, we're going to add a flare fitting in this location, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, and then add a whole bunch of fittings here, and this connection will be coming out of the stove here, and it's basically as simple as that. So. Um, let me remove this, this connection here, and uh, we'll get to cutting this tubing, and I'll go from there. Okay, now that we have that nut removed, one thing I will caution you guys is to be extremely careful with this tubing because you do not want to kink it. Okay, so now that we have that loose, we want to take all our fittings and in my particular case, we're going to install this fitting right in this location right here okay so we're going to mark and cut the tubing right roughly there okay so we we have all the fittings assembled the way they're gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and wrap all these connections with Teflon tape make sure you use the tape that's approved for gas, okay, this is uh, official approved uh, gas Teflon tape. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap all these connections and tighten them all down and then we'll be right back. As you can see, now we wrapped all our connections with Teflon tape and I snugged them all down with the exception of our flare fitting right here. Okay, I did not install the quick connect because quick connect, we have to put that 
through the body of the grill. So what we're going to do now, we decided to drill the hole on the side right here, and that's where it's going to go right in this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill the hole through the body of the grill. We're going to install this like such, and then we're going to mark the final location of the copper tubing before we cut it and flare it and make our final connection here. So let me mark the location here and drill our half inch hole to accommodate our fitting. And we'll be right back. There we go. Let me test fit that. Let me go one more larger. And there we have it. Now we just gotta put this elbow in there. I'm gonna leave it loose a little bit for right now until we get the copper tubing attached and then I'll tighten it up at the end. Give me a little bit of play. All right, now that we have the fitting in, it is a little bit loose, but I'll tighten all that down after we get the copper tubing done. So, now as you can see, we will now mark it and that's where we want it roughly right there okay okay sorry about that folks my uh, video wasn't recording but if you're not familiar how to use a tubing cutter, well, you'll have to Google that. But what I simply did is use a tubing cutter and I cut the fitting off. So you just basically run a tubing cutter around over and over again, tightening a little bit as you go and it eventually comes off. And that's how you go. Now, after it comes off, then you take this little reamer here and you go into the tube and you open it up a little bit because this cutter will eventually close down, close down the tube a little bit. And there you have it. So now what we're going to do, because this is a metric size tube and you can't source metric flare fittings here in the States, at least I couldn't find one. You have an eighth inch flare fitting and the external diameter of the tube is 11 sixty-fourths. I'm going to take this eighth inch uh, flare fitting and take this 11 sixty-fourths drill bit and drill out the center of this. So where's my drill bit? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. We're okay, that was quick. So now all we did is drill that out so we can fit it over the tube. So now 
What we're going to do is flare that out. Now we're going to get to flaring the end. Now a couple things to keep in mind. Do not forget to put the flaring nut on first. Because once we do this step, you cannot put this flaring nut on. So we will put the flaring nut on first, step one. And then step two is to put the flaring tool on. So again, if you've never done this before, I highly suggest just go to a brake shop or a hydraulic shop. They do this day in and day out. So I'm sure for a couple of bucks, they'll be able to do this for you. But it's not rocket science. So you put this tool on so your tubing is flush with the outside. Okay? Even the tube up. Take this item. Squeeze it on. And then you run it. right in the middle of the copper tubing. And then you crank it down. And what that does is put a nice chamfer Sorry about that, I didn't have it on straight. And you just tighten it down. Okay, looks good. And folks, that's the trickiest part about this whole project. And there you go. So now that comes up. And it mates with this with this fitting here, and that comes up like such. And there you have it, folks. Okay, all we have to do is tighten everything up and we're done. Okay, so now we're gonna test for leaks. I got the hose hooked up to my propane tank. We have the uh, quick disconnect hooked up to the hose. 
As you can see, we have all our fittings connected. We have the line connected here, and I have the uh, hose, hose regulator turned way down, uh, down to about uh, four PSI, and we have uh, no leaks whatsoever. Okay, so we have a success. So now what I'm gonna do is button this thing all up, reassemble the hose uh, grill, and then we're gonna test all the burners. And we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I got the uh, hose hooked up to my little tank here. This particular hose has a built-in pressure regulator that you can turn up. I turn up to about 20 PSI, which is average. And then we go over here to the tank. The, uh, the quick disconnect has a off valve on it. And all you do is pull it off, connect it, turn the valve on, turn your stove on, and there you have it. It's that quick and easy. No more fiddling with the uh, one pound bottles and, and that's it. So I am really liking this mod. And just so you know, I will put all the uh, parts links in the description below. And in case you're wondering uh, what happens if you run out of gas in your five or 20 pound uh, bottles, there is an adapter that you can use that will convert your uh, uh, um, five pound uh, tank to a one pound tank. I'll include that uh, link in the description as well. So if you have any comments, please leave them uh, below. I'd love to hear them. And uh, please leave a thumbs up and uh, see you next time.